Anyone who has ever struggled with anxiety knows how it can impact their day-to-day -day and how frustrating it can be and how scary it can be. One thing that can help you begin to tackle this is understanding that your anxiety likes to convince you that it's gonna last forever, which is not true. But what happens when we have that anxiety, we have that spike in anxiety, our brain kicks in gear and tries to figure our way out of it. And so doing that can actually make it a lot worse. You cannot think your way out of feeling. Even though some people might like to convince you that that's the case, it's not true. And you may have heard me say that in some previous videos if you've watched them. And if you haven't and you're just new and stopping by, hi and hola. My name is Keisha Martine and I'm a licensed therapist. And on this channel, I do my very, very best to offer you some concrete, tangible tools that you can use on your journey of self-improvement. And occasionally, I like to sneak in a little bit of humor here and there. And so if that sounds like something you're interested in, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Right then, moving on. We can get into the habit of letting our anxiety define us. We can get to the mindset that we can't control it and that it's beyond our control. We gotta check that can't, all right? You can, maybe you just don't know how. If you wanna learn more about how to manage your anxiety and then stick around, I'm gonna tell you. All emotions are temporary, even anxiety. But the scary part of anxiety is that it just, it presents physically, it can make you have a racing heartbeat, you can tremble, your mind just keeps going and going and going and it just seems like it's on this roller coaster ride, right? And so it's so intense, we really think, oh my God, I have to stop this, how can I make this go away? As long as you try to make it go away, the more control it has over you. Which goes back to what I was saying, you cannot think your way out of feeling. So while I know it might sound counterintuitive to embrace it, that's pretty much one of the big steps that we have to learn how to take when we're really struggling with our anxiety. It's really important for anybody out there struggling with their anxiety to understand that you're not alone in what you feel. You're not crazy, all right? It's just a feeling. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's not that easy. Believe me, I understand, I get it. Bear with me, stick it out, let me explain. As I said, your anxiety is just like any other emotion. And just like any other emotion, we have a relationship with it and how that relationship looks can really impact your response to it. So if you have a healthy relationship with your anxiety and you know it's an alert, number one, it's not a bad thing, it's there for a reason, it's uncomfortable as hell, we don't like it, but we can accept its presence and we can let it talk to us and tell us what we need to pay attention to. And your anxiety could be telling you, hey dude, you gotta connect man, you gotta slow down. You gotta be here and now. So think of it that way. When you when you have a peak in your anxiety, you gotta check in with yourself and be like, all right, what do I need right now in this very moment? Because when you're anxious, you're in the future. And so you have to get into this time zone, right? Because you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, right? All you have is right now. So right now, what is it that you need? For instance, okay, I need to take a break. I need to take a step back. I need to take a deep breath. I need to go outside, I need to go for a walk, I need to scribble on a piece of paper, I need to go break something safely and not harm anyone. Now, I'm gonna get to a big one, but before I do, if you've had experience with anxiety or you find yourself being overwhelmed by it, or maybe you've got some great skills that you would like to share, then make sure you drop in the comments. It might resonate with someone out there more so than what I'm sharing. So. Getting back to the present. I know that's not easy for a lot of us, especially if our anxiety is super high. This is just for those moments, those peak moments in which your anxiety feels like it's taking over, you can't focus, you find yourself panicking, your thoughts are on fast forward. That's when we wanna to try to use these skills. Using any of your five senses can really help you become present. So connect with things around you. What is it that you see? Focus on bright colors. Maybe you're more responsive to your sense of smell. Or maybe touch, for instance. Another one that I like to tell people to try to use is seeing every little thing that you're doing in that moment when that anxiety peaks for you. The reason why this can be so helpful is because when you're singing and you're focusing, you are in the present moment. It's really difficult to be singing out loud and be off in La La Land in the future. Also, this is a big one. Our anxiety oftentimes is related to things that are out of our control, things we cannot fix, things we cannot change, things that are not within our power to do anything about. And so really challenge yourself when your anxiety is present. Ask yourself, is this something that I have control over? 
And if not, go through those steps that I shared with you. And if so, ask yourself, okay, well, is it something I need to tend to right now in this very moment? If so, you're still gonna go through those steps and then that'll probably help you focus on the choices that you have in front of you or a direction you might need to take to address the particular thing that is causing you anxiety. Another one that's really important to remain mindful of is connecting with your breath. I know, everybody's heard this before, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. Okay, why is this a thing? Well, I'm gonna tell you, but before I move on, if you're liking this content so far and you're finding it helpful, then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Right now. The reason why connecting with your breath is so important is because it forces you to slow down. The problem can arise if we're not taught how to breathe correctly. And if we're not breathing correctly, guess what? It can make the anxiety actually a lot worse. So a lot of us tend to breathe from our chest. And we take shallow breaths. That can definitely get, increase your pulse rate, right? And that can escalate your anxiety. That's the opposite of what we wanna do. We wanna take slow, measured, intentional breaths from our diaphragm. So your belly should rise and fall when you're taking a deep breath. And it needs to be slow counts, five or six or seven counts in and then out and count as you're exhaling. If you've had any experience with meditation or yoga, you kind of have an idea how this works. And if you haven't, then I suggest maybe talking to someone who has. They can probably give you some really good tips on how to breathe correctly. What I've shared with you so far is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many different things out there that you can find that will help you cope, lessen, reduce your anxiety. And it's important that you find what works for you. For instance, I might be able to manage my anxiety just by going for a walk, but other people might need to just sit and have a cup of hot tea. So just keep that in mind as you're processing all of this that I've shared with you. Also, it's important that you try to identify your triggers. And if you have a hard time with that, then that's where I would suggest having a therapist or a coach or a spiritual guide might be able to assist you with that. Once you know your triggers, then you can kind of prepare yourself and essentially do your emotional exercises to run that marathon that anxiety sometimes is. Which brings me to my next tip, is progressive muscle relaxation. I know some of you out there might be really resistant to this idea because maybe you've tried it or it was recommended to do yoga or meditation, but this is something you could do very quickly. Uh, you don't have to take an hour out of your day to do it, right? When you notice your anxiety is present, usually there are physical symptoms, right? Maybe tightening of your shoulders or maybe your throat closes up or your palms get sweaty, however it presents for you. When you notice it's there, what you wanna do is Number one, accept that it's there. Tell yourself it's all right. It's temporary. It's gonna pass, right? Then, you know, connect with your breath or focus on your surroundings. Then what you're gonna do is as you breathe, you can start from your toes all the way up or from your head all the way down. And essentially, you're just gonna focus your energy on tightening areas of your body as you breathe in and then let go as you breathe out. So remember, you're gonna tighten when you breathe in and release when you exhale. So that's another thing you can use in the moment. Now, stop. Before you go, I've put down in the description a link to a worksheet called Simple Ways to Get Present. This is not something I've created, it's something that I use with some of my clients. And I thought, well, maybe I need to provide that for people out there that maybe don't have access to therapy. And I think it might be a helpful companion with what I've shared with you today, so check that out. One thing that I feel like is often overlooked when we're trying to address anxiety is how anxiety might be alerting you to other emotions that you haven't dealt with. When you're pushing and stuffing and all the things, your emotions are trying to get your attention in some way, some form, and some fashion. So if you're ignoring those feelings, guess what? Anxiety is gonna come in and be like, hey dude, you gotta pay attention to this, right? And it hits us at the most random time sometimes. It can be in the middle of our work day when we're doing something. We could be at the grocery store and it could just pop up. Right? And so that might be something you might want to look at. Okay, are there other emotions that you have yet to process? And if so, how are you going to make room for them and work with them instead of trying to ignore them altogether? Now here's the hard part. Sometimes our anxiety is not really alerting us to anything in particular, it's just there. Sometimes those alerts are misfires because of a lot of different reasons. But in order to get to the bottom of that, you probably have to do some exploring and therapy. 
I know you guys may not want to hear that, but again, this isn't fast food therapy. It's not meant to replace therapy. It's just to offer you some tools that you can use on your own. And one last thing, if you're not following us on Instagram yet, then make sure you do it because the posts consist of a lot of helpful quotes and engagement for you guys to connect with us. And I say us because I mean, you know, the proverbial as at Venus Springs. <laughs> I represent it, so yeah, I'm, I don't have, you know, more than one personality, just to be clear. Yeah, just follow us there, ask your questions, make your comments, and connect with us, because that's what we want. That wasn't the last thing, I'm sorry, I know. <sighs> ADHD, hmm. not a joke. Where was I? Oh yeah, so I did a poll, like I mentioned in my last video, where I'm developing content for you guys, and this is the first part in that content schedule that I've created as a result of what your responses were. So, if you have something you wanna hear about, you gotta let me know, because if I don't know what you wanna know, then I don't know how to help you know what you don't know. So, yeah, that's it, I think. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and enjoyed this content and until next time be well be strong and be love